Well, hey, Gundam Maniacs, welcome to the Gundam Explained Show Live. I am your host, Adam Blue. Uh, and today, joining, like usual, is just Steven. I, I, we went like the past, I think, three shows with uh, with people. We haven't had time to ourselves lately. Yeah, you know, it has felt a little uh, a little crowded. But no, we've had some great people on, and that's been awesome, honestly. Yes. I, I love having a third chair. But yeah, this week has been crazy because it feels like it's been a while since we've streamed, I, it, at least to me. But No, I know what you mean. Even when we were streaming yesterday, it felt more like one of those like working sessions of you and I just like talking like the latest topic. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, it has been fun with with the others for sure. Like when there's three people, a lot of times it adds a little bit more to talk about. But uh, definitely. And then we have our own baggage. Sometimes we like to spill on the channel. So. <laughs> Yeah, I know people think that we don't like talk to each other outside of the show that like we probably just hate each other and we, we show up <laughs> for each other's shows and then like just don't talk the rest of the week. We actually do. We like occasionally. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I feel like we try to force some sort of rivalry to make the stream a little more interesting, but we can never do it. It's <laughs> like I think I, I, I tried to hold it against you that you, you're not into future you see. That it's never really been <laughs> like a funny elaborate plot. So. <laughs> no, it, it, we'll we'll come up with something that we really disagree about uh, eventually. But yeah, uh, for yeah. now, it's it's all been copacetic. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, but no, very cool. And to see everyone already in the chat, Zionic Shadow uh, being first. Usually Robert grabs that crown, but we've got yeah. uh, King Dylan, James Belmont of the Belmont family, uh, Talos Mobius, Ultronimus, Barry BB. Good to see everybody. But yeah. Fun week um, yesterday on your channel. Really neat stuff again of sort of a guide through modifying a 3D file, specifically a Mark II cockpit, it, you know, doing it in Blender, which I'm not too familiar with. You've shown me some things, but it is cool to see you doing it live um, because Blender you're having to think. That software is crazy. So it's. Yeah. <laughs> But being able to think through the problems live, I feel like it, it, it's helpful even for me. It's very interesting. But um, no, I appreciate that. And, and and I always I love having you on to kind of uh, call me out as I'm doing things, because if I were working in a vacuum on some of these things, I would probably either a never finish or b just screw up. Constantly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then and then wasn't it where uh I didn't understand a certain word and you explained it to me like was uh, uh, Enogs or something. Oh, Enogs. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Engons. Engons. Uh, yeah. The evil Ghostbuster twin. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, that was cool because we were joking about it, but it kind of did help me understand kind of the foundational way, I guess, shapes are described. Yeah, you know, it's um, I love when we get into those things. Uh, obviously, I enjoy when we're talking with another guest and we have like lots of Gundam news to talk about. But it's fun when you kind of look at how things are made and you start to understand like, you know, oh, just because you have access to like Gundam Battle Operation 2 files doesn't mean that you can like 3D print an army of Zaku's like there's actually a lot of work and a lot of uh, detailing that goes into it. And so you know, part of what I do is I hope kind of showing people the way and saying like, hey, you know, you can if you download these files, like you're not going to be able to do much with them, but I will teach you how to make the most out of what you what resources you can pull off the Internet. And I think that's pretty good, too, especially if you're someone that's like just getting into 3D printing. And a lot of times it's easier if it's sort of like task based. It's like, what should I be doing? It's like, oh. Steven's provided this and he's shown this. Let's see if I can get that to work. And and then you have the Discord community, obviously, if you need to ask questions. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's cool stuff. Um, um, oh, another thing, real quick, I was just seeing from uh, Talos is he's actually uh gonna be out of town for a while. Um, I don't think he said it publicly, so I'll just say he's gonna be gone for a while, so we'll miss him, but he'll be yeah. back. Um, yeah, we so hope. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, no, I'm I'm really excited for him, and uh, you know, I wish him all the best, um, yeah. you know, for his hiatus. So, well, um, so today there's not many crazy topics that we're gonna cover. Actually, there's gonna be a lot of crazy things, but no, like definitive. <laughs> like, here's some Gundam news. We will talk about the new real grade Gundam because I didn't really care too much about it until 
Stephen brought up something on his show yesterday. And then I think you can even watch my mind, like just realize what they're doing with this. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I could uh, put you on to some of the sweeter features of this kit. Yeah, but I think that's funny. That says something about me, how I see that they've announced a 2.0 road grade. I'm like, huh, okay, I'll probably buy it. <laughs> but like I, you know, it's but once you know I hear more about it and see some of the stuff, I'm like, okay, this is uh, interesting. Um, so another thing, you know, I haven't been watching any Gundam anime lately, uh, but I've been watching that X Men uh, show, the X Men '97. I will say the last two episodes have been kind of boring, but they kind of remind me of the those some of those older X Men episodes where it's right, like they're trying to capture the essence of the '90s. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, I think they're balancing, okay, here's some, like, continual story, and then, oh, here's an episode about this character going through something, whereas I think on this stream, I have called that out as filler, and I've learned that I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't uh, look at it that way, it's, it, 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 maybe I'm not interested in backstory of that character for now, but it does build up the characters, and I learned to appreciate that through Japanese anime um yeah I think so I mean there's definitely you you can definitely tell the difference between true filler content which is kind of like nothing content where everything kind of resets at the end of the episode and then there's content that you know like you said it goes deeper into a character's backstory and you might not realize it at the time but you know sometimes that ends up there there's there's some payoff there where it's like yeah. a few episodes down the line there's a callback to that and it's like oh now i see why there was that like strange musical episode or something yeah <laughs> well yeah that's funny because even with like the filler episode they just had what was cool about it was it had like a a, a section that was like the 16 bit like uh, action game uh it was almost like the old x men arcade game but like jubilee was in it i and love then, that yeah, I, one, I love that because that's a for something that has to be filler, it's cool for it to have some sort of gimmick to it. Yeah. Um, but then on top of that, it made me think, wow, how come that X Men arcade game has never been ported? Um, you know, consider that, you know, uh, I don't really, I think anyone could really have, I think that when it comes to X Men and Marvel, it's more of you can go to Disney and get the license to make a game. So I think it's just a matter of that because Konami made that game. And Konami, even though they're not good at making new games, they do re-release their old games often. Like, every year there's releases. Like, even right now there's physical releases of, like, Rocket Knight Adventure and yeah. stuff. So, I Licensing is funny because, and this is one of those, like, dad horror stories, but, <laughs> like, you know, my, my daughter has one of those Tony boxes. It's like, the yeah, I think we've talked about it on my stream, where it's like the little magnetic figures that you can put on the box and it plays different music based on the figure that you put on there oh. they have disney themed ones right so they have like a princess elsa princess rapunzel what have you but what's interesting about it is that they don't have the licenses to the actual disney songs so it's a different singer singing the disney songs because they don't have the legal rights to use the tracks from the movies which is fascinating to me because it's like so you have the rights to use the characters and to use their likenesses and everything, but then you can't get the rights to the actual music. So copyright is one of those things that it's like, it's deeply complex. And I think we even have that issue in Gundam too, right? Like, isn't that part yeah. of why we have SD stuff is because it has to do. Yeah. It'd be able to like combine different universes in that it, the context depends on, yeah. What the licensing yeah, it's, you know, it's funny because you brought up music and I feel like music is the number one culprit to a lot of this. And even with this uh, X-Men 97 cartoon, apparently it was mandated like they will pay whatever it takes to get rights to that song. And in fact, it indeed was really hard to and they I did bet. pay a lot to get it, which I think worked because I'm the type of person. And I know we've talked about this where music is like. 50% of that enjoyment of something for me. Like it puts yeah. me in. So when that first X-Men episode just played the theme song while fighting Sentinels, I'm like, Oh my God. Yeah. If they didn't have that, then I think the show would have been just an abject failure. I think the jury's still out on it. Like, you know, total let's yeah. wait until the end of the season. But like, I think if they had not gotten the rights to that song. Well, you know, what's funny. They just 
announced they're going to have a season three. Oh, wow. <laughs> and they and season two isn't even released yet. And so I think like they're already in projecting. And from what I hear, this is like super popular. And I got to say, yeah. like watching it so far, this is the least other than and Andor, this is the least offensive Disney has been with a property. Um, I do take one bit of offense. Oh, and I was yeah. talking to my brothers about this. Okay. Is this is how you know it was written by Disney is that that infamous scene with Gambit in the crop top. Oh, the crop top doesn't bother me. Gambit being a chef also doesn't bother me. What does bother me is that of all of the Cajun Creole food foods that he could have been cooking, you had him making beignets like he's Princess Tiana from the Princess and the Frog. No, no, no. He would be making some crawfish etouffee or some jambalaya like yeah, what Come was on. that? Was he frying ham? What what the beignets? Yeah, he was making don't... donuts basically. Oh, yeah, beignets, I had no idea donuts. what that was. Uh, okay, <laughs> so that, that's, that's funny though. I love that in the Princess and the Frog is like Princess Tiana from the Princess and the Frog. Like her big thing is that she makes these beignets with like powdered sugar on top and all this stuff. Okay, neat I'm connection. Like, neat I'm like connection. Gambit would not be making desserts. Gambit would be making a yeah. main dish. <laughs> I love that. I, that's kind of funny because, yeah, <laughs> picking at the little things you have. Disney, there you go. You got to insert your print now. Um, <laughs> that's pretty good. I, yeah, and there's some things that I think are interesting, like Gambit in a crop top. Like, that's a cool kind of design for the type of guy he is, you know, and yeah. and just other things in general. Um, and and I, even the episode from uh, yesterday that I said I was a little disappointed in, not disappointed in, like, a Disneyfication of it, but just disappointed in it. Oh, that's just one of those episodes, but it yeah. did all the wacky things the show would do. So it's cool that Disney's not, it's not trying to be like, okay, well let's make it where it's every episode is a little more mature or in terms of story, you know? Um, and I mean, even if you go back to the original, like it makes you wonder in that first episode when morph gets offed is like why would you oh. even introduce a character like morph just so that he can get shot by a sentinel and it's like again you get that payoff you know dozens of episodes later when he falls in with mr sinister uh, spoilers for yeah. those who haven't watched the original 90s show but no that's um, a good point i found a video that was recapping the show and uh or the series and it came to me how often they do that in that yeah. They would have things happen, and then later on, even with the time travel, like it's even even if the time travel stuff was just like, okay, we'll add something and have them go back in time again. They at least wrote it in a way where they were being conscious of it and making it like, whoa, okay, so this is connected with that. And um, but I don't think at the time when I was a kid when I watched it, I appreciated that at all or really understood. No. I'm definitely I, not. I, I know I didn't. Yeah, like I could sometimes maybe be like, oh, that's neat. That that, but I never like, wow, excellent writing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but so you know, real quick, I was showing you this before. Again, I know this is this is a Gundam show. This is a Gundam themed show. Uh, so this is my April first uh, uh, X Men explained. But no, just just for fun, um, I I bought one of those new you know kind of four inch figures which is very neat that they're doing that because, you know, those Gundam figures were releasing in that scale. And I, I was super happy about that because I like that scale. And and Did I had to match some... up like is, is Cyclops like the same height as Char? And well, let's see. So here's uh here's a little Xeon no, pilot. He might be a little bigger, but it is kind of a superhero bigger. That's true. That's, and then, we, we call that heroic scale. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Let me move this over. Oh, oh, well, of course, uh, Wolverine would be a little shorter. Little shorter. <laughs> um, and then here's the original line that's super articulated where, yeah, she seems way taller, but that the scaling of this, it's called Marvel Universe. They're a little off anyway, but um, no, it's, it's, it's pretty neat. So anyway, I, I got that because um, the kid in me was like, oh, Adam, look, Target exclusive. I mean, it comes <laughs> with the... Uh, Gambit with some effect parts to throw his cards. <laughs> That's my type of thing. So, um, absolutely. So, have you actually then been keeping up with the show? Uh, I'm a couple episodes behind, but oh, I, okay. I watched the first episode. I think I got like a few minutes into the second one, but um, but yeah, I mean, uh, otherwise, like 
I think it's entertaining. It's definitely not. Yeah, I I, I wouldn't kick it out. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, I uh, yeah I'm uh I'm I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, definitely. Which which is interesting, you know, if we talk about Disney with Gundam and how you know Cuckoo's Dolan's Island to me felt like a Disney style movie or if like a in terms of the the classic sort of traditional Disney storytelling, you mm-hmm. know, because there are some, you know, mature themes and I think they handle the comedy well, but it's mainly watching these characters go through this struggle, you know, but there's that family aspect, relationship aspect, you know, you have the orphan kids or whatever. That's a big Disney thing to have. Um, True. And, and it's cool, you know, like I, so it's interesting. Yeah, like in Japan, they're doing the thing, right, where Disney Plus will get anime. Uh, Which is kind of cool. Like, yeah, and I feel like Cuckoo's Doan's Island, even in the U.S., would be perfect for Bandai to be like, hey, Disney, partnership deal. Could we put this and see what happens? I don't know. Because, you know, they're now combining all their Hulu stuff into Disney Plus. So it's going to start having more. It's going to they're going to have the new Punisher show coming. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm glad that they are uh, reviving the old Netflix stuff. It's like, you know, who would have thought that like the more adult themed Netflix Marvel shows were going to perform better than the Disney Plus Marvel shows? Like, oh wow, is just, that? I didn't know if that was the case, but is that the case? That I mean, I would, I would say uh, they have to have right. Like, I think Daredevil was was fantastic, and like the Punisher series was good um luke cage was was awesome like the defenders that whole thing i really enjoyed um oh what's her name uh jessica jones but uh yeah i mean i couldn't get into things like she hulk or i mean is that really the only well they they did like the what if cartoons on disney plus but which is interesting because i found out that the people that made what if also are making x-men interesting it's like they're same because there was it was either a producer or an animator someone that would be more into the weeds was saying how they were evolving their work from that to that so that's really neat like it's the first time it seems like marvel animation is actually now a serious thing like how dc is known for its animation um and you know real quick ultronomous said something earlier and it just popped back up um about um saying that it was ported that x-men arcade game if you got details on that let me know because i'm curious what platform that was um because then i can emulate it (laughs) yeah for sure (laughs) um so this isn't that arcade game that was on the genesis was it the like the one that you could play as wolverine cyclops gambit or nightcrawler no this was this was a arcade only um game and it was I want to say there was a six player version, but I could be wrong. But I just remember the first time I saw it in 1993, I was in San Jose, California at a drive in theater. Um, I think I was seeing Army of Darkness. Um, and we went to the arcade, and I remember just seeing that X Men cabinet. And like, I'm pretty sure it was six players. And I was like, oh my God, like this, this is the coolest thing. Cause the only, by, I don't think I, Either I knew the X-Men animated series by then or there was like these VHS shows that came out before where yeah. Wolverine had the brown costume. Mm-hmm. And but it was kind of the same. It's supposed to be like in the same uh, thing. But I remember seeing that play. But then it would you would rarely see that arcade game really everywhere. And I went to the arcades a lot when I was a kid, but not like a whole ton. Usually it was like, oh, games arcades can't wait for it to come out on Genesis or Super Nintendo. Yeah, I was going to say, did you have a lot of arcades where you grew up? Because I did not. I that did. Like... There was a a bowling alley down the street for me that was the main place I would go and always play arcades. And then like, man, the late 90s, they built this like mega arcade at a mall here, but it only lasted like a couple of years because that was the time. Bummer. And I would go there because they would have all the Capcom and SNK fighting games that you know, I remember, I want to say I played Guilty Gear there, and then I think that's what got me to buy a PlayStation 2 or something. Eventually, I was like, oh, I got it. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, we had a couple of cabinets at our local movie theater, but I have to say that that is the absolute worst place to put video game cabinets because, you know, when my family would go out to watch movies together, you know, my parents would take us all out, take all the kids out. It's like, 
we're going to watch the movie like we show up like within 15 minutes of the movie starting so there's not enough time for me to like log hours and hours <laughs> you know playing uh, house of the dead or anything like that yeah the, i guess the main times that i would do that is when my mom wanted to go bowling because she was a big bowler and so bowling, I would, yeah for sure I, I would just hang out at the arcade at the bowling alley and yeah that's where i played a lot of galaga i remember when virtual fighter first came out and it was like oh my god and like learning that um yeah the, i remember yeah when i first saw the teenage mutant ninja turtles arcade it was like 1989 at that bowling alley and i saw it and there was too many people playing and i couldn't play and then one day i got a chance to play but i died and then i just started crying because like <laughs> it's like it's so awesome at that yeah. age to see this to play and then you have to like pay money and then there's the stack of quarters there that's like people waiting to, yeah. <laughs> to take uh, your spot and yeah i remember <laughs> at a grocery store we were checking out and then on the way out they had the ninja turtle arcade game right there and i i was i got to play it and then i died and i just was crying <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> and that was the time when I would go home and get cardboard and make like a fake like TV and then cardboard cut out Ninja Turtles on uh, <laughs> obstacle sticks that I could move around on the sides. <laughs> that is so funny. Like uh, to me, that is such a like quintessential gamer thing to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I will make my own video games. You know, um, and that was funny. So that was, you know, 1989, 90. And to be honest, I played the video games, but I didn't really care about video games that much. It was more yeah. of, if there was an IP that had like a video game or cause I remember when Mario two first came out, I would play Mario at a friend's house and I, Mario two was like, this doesn't look like Mario because you know how Mario two is all different. And I was like, <laughs> what is this even? So I would just play it as like its own thing. I didn't even think like, Oh, this is Mario. Um, and um, we, and it wasn't until uh, Sonic uh, I saw how fast he was and he, how cool he was. And I was like, Oh yeah. Now I'm into video games, like, <laughs> <laughs> which is funny because they, I remember that bowling alley had a Sonic arcade game. It, it was like the first Sonic there was, and it had like another character you could choose also like a something that was added later on into yeah, um, uh, the other stuff. But that, that bowling alley still exists and, the, and there's two rooms of arcades and now it's just pool tables. No more, no more arcades. Dang. It's, it yeah, went I mean, from, oh, I know that the barcade scene is taking off, like yeah. especially around here. There's a there's like what used to be a warehouse district is now like just nothing but breweries. And like there's one brewery that does, you know, the kind of like the lawn games like they have giant Jenga, they have cornhole, that type of thing. But then there's a barcade and I wasn't too thrilled with the uh, game selection that they had there. Uh, there was a bar that I used to go to in college that actually did have street fighter 2 it had the T oh. tmnt game and it had one other cabinet that i was like this is the spot um but i don't think it's around anymore it was a it was a pretty filthy spot <laughs> oh. when i walked in there the description that i always tell people is like it smelled like the 90s in there and oh, if you funny. know <laughs> that's just enough smoke because that was when it was ending the, the it, yeah, it was like <laughs> smoke maybe a little bit of urine like there's like a, a there's a very distinctive like this is the 90s I sm i'm smelling that's, here no that's funny you saying that because i feel like you know especially our generation if we were to associate a scent with the 90s it would be cigarette smoke because i i remember that transition where places would smell like cigarette smoke that allowed it and then growing up it was like places were banning it and then yeah. it was like do you remember like the hybrid restaurants where it was like you would have like the smoking, yeah, smoking section, section and the non-smoking section? Wow. Like, that doesn't really exist anymore. No, no, because it used to be it's like you had to have two separate ventilation systems or two separate ACs in order to accommodate that. And who who has that? Dude, it has been so that triggered a memory of smoking or non-smoking. Exactly. God, and I would be like, memory. I don't care wherever I could sit. <laughs> wow, that's that's <laughs> very interesting. Um, I and I bet there's other places that still have that where maybe like a lot of their patrons or I don't know, you know, yeah. people could do whatever. I guess. Um, Free. Maybe Talos is saying we still have those sections. Yeah. Ah. yeah. But he also has robots. I'm not joking. In, in Greece, apparently there is a statue of a, a automaton or something that was part of their <laughs> mythology. It's pretty badass. 
But I, I know a lot uh, of Greek mythology, but I don't know anything about automatons. So I'm going yeah. to have to get a lesson from Talos on that. Well, and what it is, is it's one of those things where the way myths are explained, it sounds like some fantasy, but it's trying to explain science. Mm, like, yeah. how do you explain a robot to people that don't understand technology? You know? Exactly. So, um, yeah, ancient Greek mobile suits. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, that's where his name comes from. Talos, guardian of Crete. Nice. Yes, that's, uh, but no, uh, real quick. So we have some of those bars around here uh not a lot though oh like the barcade style the bar yeah. yeah um yeah the ones near me are more further into the city where it's probably not safe to be driving late uh anyway you have to, yeah. have to go to the bar but there is a retro toy shop and game shop i've talked about that's like close by um and uh, right across from it like it's like five feet like they're really like across from each other <laughs> is an arcade where you can go and you just like pay seven bucks and you can just play i want to say it's all you want i mean honestly i think that the ultimate uh restaurant idea would be if we had like a restaurant that had booths and in the center of the booth was a tv so i'm thinking like a corner booth where you've got like you know seats on left and right a tv that faces the the people and then there's consoles in the in the booth and so you can sit, order drinks, order food, sit there, play video games with your friends. And like, you know, like you said, it's like maybe you play all night, but maybe there's like a fee for like, you know, you get so many uh, tokens or, or whatever. Kind of like bowling, right? Because like bowling is, yeah. is, is that where it's like, oh, you can play so many games or you can play for so many hours. I, I like mean, that idea because, you know, for people wanting to go out and socialize and do something, sometimes I would like to socialize with gaming, but it's like, okay, who's going to whose house? Yeah. Who has the equipment? And, you know, yeah, if you were at like a restaurant where you could choose a booth to sit in that has like maybe screens that fold up out and can turn or something. Yeah. But it's it has the emulators on there. So it's like you could Even choose better. anything. Like it's, it could be a group of friends that just want to play, yeah, the TMNT arcade couch or, co op all the way or what if it's a group of friends that want to sign into Fortnite and just play some Fortnite at a bar or whatever that, that's a pretty cool idea yeah you need to do this okay keep me updated <laughs> all right <laughs> new patreon tier <laughs> oh, that's that's amazing um well cool um okay so real quick we're gonna jump into uh one of the topics we're gonna talk about yeah, let's talk some Gundam. Yeah, let's talk some Gundam <laughs> on this Gundam show. Right, uh, the that Gundam we have. show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but um, with this, uh, yeah, just real quick, looking at that, uh, the real grade version 2.0. So again, I, I was a little dismissive at first, not in a bad way, but more of, okay, another granddaddy. Yeah. But there are some things, uh, first, the first main thing that you pointed out to me, um, and I hope they have that detailed here um i don't know if this I one so. does i think it was the previous slide is it that one no huh or is it the one where there's like the image of the fingers is that it huh no. i wonder if it's not on this website but uh oh, shoot. You failed me again hobby link japan <laughs> no but really what it is is so where the core fighter is and they showed this in a promotional shot. There is a point of articulation, which, like you brought up on your uh, stream yesterday, is a lot of these mobile suits that have like that gimmick, the flight gimmick, whether it's they're transforming or it's a core block that's in them that limits the range of mo motion in the in the uh, that torso area. Whether that's, I mean, not only just to kind of a bend forward or back, but even it kind of inhibits that swivel. Yeah, but this has a point of articulation. At sort of the uh, the midpoint, I guess, of it in general, where like I guess the end of the cockpit, the back of the cockpit would like move or go into the back of the core fighter. Yeah, it's very interesting the way it's designed. Like it, it's almost like the core fighter like snaps in half yeah. or something like that. Where it's yeah, yeah. And so to me, that's amazing because this is a way to get the get both of both Beth by the the best of both worlds, which is a fully articulated, you know, granddaddy Gundam. That's a real grade, okay? So we're talking about these highly detailed ones that are supposed to be known for their articulation anyway. And then on top of that, um, having that 
fully functional core fighter in there, you know, to come out. So, yeah. But I think this speaks to kind of a, a greater thing that we want to see out of, uh, you know, Gumpla, whether it is transformable or not. Because I, I even think there are some Gumpla that don't have necessarily interesting gimmicks, but there's some weird articulation. Um, you know, so we see this solution they have for something like this, where it's a core fighter that comes out. Could that be applied to a Zeta type Gumpla? I mean, because I think you would have to be more than just, I don't know, could they potentially add some more articulation and then maybe as you're pulling out the, because uh, with all the Zetas so far, they seem to be a very similar sort of thing where the, the uh, sides of the abdomen yeah. come out, the head goes down and you kind of lock it. The front moves up. Um, so it has something to do with this uh, the somewhere side. in the torso. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I feel like a lot of the complication with the Zeta in particular, and ironically, this is actually kind of addressed in that perfect grade Zeta manual where it says like Camille's the one that came up with this idea is how do you take the wings that are on the back in robot mode and then get them down to the bottom in flight mode? And so like, it's funny because the Anaheim engineering division they were like oh well he should just pick it up over his head and pull it down in front of him and that was like oh well you know he would have to slow down while he's operating the mobile suit and it causes all yeah. this like g-forces and all these issues and it was camille's idea to say no 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 we're gonna cut the flying armor in half and the wings are gonna fold up under the armpits and that is how you get the flying armor to deploy at the front of the zeta gundam and it's like okay that's brilliant in an anime where like physics don't apply but then like how do you make that into a real thing and so you end up usually you know, like i mean most of the zeta gundams that transform they have like a flimsy like maybe like a double jointed bar that attaches the wing right. to the back exactly yeah. and it's always it's always off yeah it's like, it, it's like you, would... you can never get it to like look right <laughs> because there's not a smooth transition it's it's almost like the other option would be have it re removable. Like, and that's a good point. Like, what if they're able to come up with a way to do it where there's more of it that's removable, but then there's less moving pieces? Yeah, I mean that that could be something. Um, okay, and let me let me ask this though: Would you prefer like a future Zeta kit? Is just here's the figure here's the wave rider or should they continue down making each one some crazy spaghetti dinner of a transformation <laughs> yeah i mean if they came as one thing then i think that that would be kind of cool like one kit that came with both options because i think that's what they yeah. do with like a lot of the 0083 kits like the the uh gpo3 yeah. comes with the core fighter and the kit and i think the gpo1 does as well yeah that's right um, but conversely you know it's like if you look at the cross silhouette zeta for instance they have that option part set that allows you to transform it into the wave rider but like once you transform it into the wave rider like you can't transform it back it takes forever because you have to actually like disassemble the kit um hmm. that's like the worst of <laughs> the worst of both worlds <laughs> but that's a good point because you know maybe it depends on the target audience but are you transforming for the sake of this being a fully functional you know uh mobile suit that is going by the animation where it can transform you know or are is the transforming for the sake of this is an enjoyable experience like i have done transformations that seem like it's part of playing with it and I've done transformations that seem like, okay, this is like a task you have to do in order to get its other state. That's a very good point. Yeah, because it, I feel like with Gumpla, I mean, wh what do you think? Is and you're the a big youngest... Jobby fan, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, Jobby the Hong, obviously, you know, when he's reviewing a Transformers action figure, like, he almost always skips through the transformation process unless there's something unique to talk about with that. But it's like, yeah. man... The, the higher end Transformers, like the collector's edition Transformers toys, they're not like friendly to transform. Oh, like, yeah. It is 
I, I would almost never transform those things if I had them. I mean, I barely transform my Zetas when. Exactly. In in fact, the only one, uh, the only ones that I I can transform and have fun with are non UC. It's like yeah. wing kits or something, or seed. Also, yeah, like that new seed from uh, Zionic Shadow and Seed New York, uh, the Freedom. Yeah. And I think that that's part of like those new designs is like the Zeta Gundam being the first transformable Gundam in Gundam. And it's like the most complex versus, you know, things like the the wing zero. It's like, oh, the torso rotates and that's it. Or like the Epion, the legs fold over. That's it. Yeah. And even King Dylan is saying one of the Gaza suits. Um, I don't see E. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, they that. basically just ab crunch. Yeah. And, and go. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the Zeta Gundam is a particularly, I, I don't want to, it, it's not a poor design because it's perfect. Yes, <laughs> but... it's weird. It's like, I'm I'm only talking bad, or I feel like we're only talking down about it because we c care and like the idea about it so much. Exactly. And... I think that that's where it comes from. It comes yeah. from a place of passion and a place of, uh, you know, it's like we want it to work so badly. Yeah, because I have it up. Uh, I have my master grades on a shelf up here, and whenever I glance at it, I am uh, the edges, the proportions. It's just even if it's not like a preferred way, it's still done very well and looks mm -hmm. excellent. Um, so, but hey, okay, this RX seventy eight could be a step in that direction, right? So that's yeah, and that's what I want to get to next because it seems like really the only main thing about this is adding that ab crunch a little bit of change of proportions i do like the no hyper hammer <laughs> oh yeah i feel uh, like that uh that chick-fil-a meme have, have you seen that one going uh, around like no chick-fil-a sauce <laughs> <laughs> no hyper hammer <laughs> okay i haven't seen that um but uh it, it, so the other interesting thing though about this is if we're looking at the proportions i was trying to zoom in a little more like the vent uh, the way the proportions of the vent kind of the the head having a more bulbous look to it like there's different iterations in which we get a design of the granddaddy even though they're all pretty similar yeah this seems to evoke something very interesting like i think the head is is like prime granddaddy looking head the shoulders seem to be a little uh longer or bigger by just a little bit yeah right definitely now do, um, you, do you like the proportions on this on this version i do i feel yeah. like it i do like it but i feel like it's slightly going beyond and i don't know how to explain this like more of the 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 slimmer traditional look of the rx 78 being like this early design type of mobile suit you know um yeah I feel like I'm really just picking at whatever I really can. Uh, <laughs> and I think it's just because of seeing the RX-78-2 in the anime. Like, those proportions really work. Or origin. And so what yeah. this really is, you know, the real grade is just an interpretation. And I think it looks good. You, do you like it? I'm a huge fan. I think, I, I mean, I typically gravitate towards these sort of, like, bulky, chunky proportions. Um... So yeah, yeah. I, I like it a lot, you know. But but like you, like I can appreciate the origin designs, um, but they are a little sleeker, a little more slender. Yeah. Um, and you know, part of that too is, and I think that's what's the fun with the real grades is the the mechanical engineering of building it because yeah. I feel like with a real grade, there's a lot more pieces, but I feel like there's a lot of deliberateness with how they want you to build it. You know, as opposed to some high grades where it's like, well, here's some random shapes to slap together. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree. I think that um, it's very, I guess, purpose driven. And I guess so now they haven't released any details about the, like the inner frame uh, gimmick right. about this, because I know that the the first couple of real grades it was like oh the inner frame is like completely one piece and like you know you break out the inner frame and then you're basically putting armor on the outside of it but like more recent real grades have been you know you're kind of constructing them from scratch so yeah. i'm wondering if this is adopting that newer style of real grade where it's like yes you do construct the inner frame but it's not 
it's kind of more like the uh, the perfect great unleashed, right? Like because that's the yeah. same way. Yeah. And I kind of see that with this because even with this picture of the inner frame, we do see these layers, but we see some areas where the layers wouldn't ever really be one uh, uh, congruent piece. What word am I looking for? You know what I mean? Instead yeah. of like, it seems like it's kind of, yes, yeah, separated into bits, which I wonder if that was the intention when scaling back that inner frame idea was that kind of made it just kind of hard to, to get the engineering right. Oh, um, definitely. Now, if they were able to recycle that inner frame for more kits, then I can see them using it oh. more. But, like, I think part of the problem is that they made the inner frame before they had, like, a family of kits that were going to be able to fit that frame. I see. And, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I think the proof is in the pudding where it's, like, once you got to, like, some of those mid to late UC mobile suits and, like, the Zazabi and the new Gundam, like, you can't use the same frame yeah that's rx78 for those like well okay here's a question then what would be what would you want as another well one do you like the real grade line yeah i really do i i think that they are an awesome um it's, to me it's a different type of experience building experience yeah definitely and, and i think that you know because you started with a real grade i think that yeah. real grades are a great um jumping on point for people that want a more satisfying build experience yep i think that if people just want the kit and they want the finished product like go hg all the way because yep. like it's going to be easy you'll knock out the build pretty quickly um and then for like the professional builders, obviously master grade, perfect grade, all that stuff. But like for someone who really wants to enjoy the building process, real grade is awesome. Yeah, it, it's Except another way to if you buy the Zeta. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, then that brings up another point, which that might be the answer or might not be. What would be in chat? Let me know what you think. What would be a good another good real grade 2.0 and why? Because I think they're for the real grades I have. I would say they're all good but one. And that is the new Gundam. Wow. The, you the, don't like the new Gundam. Yeah, it's it I mean, it looks cool and it was kind of an easy build, but it's um fin funnel system. Snaps fins, off easily. Yeah. It, it's it's horrible. The fin system it has is a joke. That's that's funny because people typically rate the new Gundam as one of like the top three or top five. Well, it's because other than that fin rack, it is an action. It is a robot spirits figure when you build it. Nice. Like it nice. is like it's it's a great looking figure with high articulation. Doesn't fall apart except for that fin rack. And the reason so you're saying get the what is it? What what's the FF version? The oh yeah, the one they, that comes they the one funnel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a real great. It. It's basically the same kit. Yeah, and and so that's what's interesting. Like it's it's a great figure but that rack on the back and and so it poses multiple problems one it could just be when i when i would have it on a stand and it would have the the rack sometimes they would kind of move or if something yeah, touches it it weight. breaks off <laughs> distribution yeah, and, issue yeah and then it will knock uh, into other things it's like it's one of those things where when i go to put it on display it's like well i need to have it have enough clearance because the back could fall off it could hit something else it's like i don't want to have to think about that when i'm storing or standing up my uh my high grade or yeah. real grade new because other than that i feel like all those real grades have been awesome even i the one zionic shadow got me of the uh the epion epion oh yeah, yeah that is oh like, that so... thing is awesome i haven't finished building it yet but oh yeah it's because i still I, I mean i even have it out and it's not even with a display of anything related to it because i just like what it is on its own which is an interesting thought because it's almost like when it comes to the engineering of these real grades they can really do something special to make something more interesting than you might think first but what would be a 2.0 in your opinion yeah, I mean, I know it's probably a dumb answer to say, like, I would want a Zeta 2.0, but, like, I really do want them to keep keep cracking at making a Zeta that transforms and does it well and doesn't lose all of its articulation as a result of that. But if I had to give an answer that's not the, the typical yeah. answer, um, 
I don't know if this would be a 2.0, but I would want to see like a goof custom. Because yeah. they never made any um, real grade goofs, did they? Yeah, that seems like that would be an obvious one, too. Just thinking of, well, I guess, you know, it. it's weird what they pick sometimes. Yeah. And what they don't pick, like how they did a lot of the GPO series, which I thought was strange. But I wonder if because GPO fans are because if it's sort of the nature of the GPO series kind of being like a top gun thing, F 18 model kit F yeah. and then making those real grade maybe seem to make sense in that regard. That's a oh. good point. And you know, it makes me question like kind of everything about the real grade line because you know, exactly. it's like they made GPO one and like the full burner version. They didn't do a GPO two, did they? No, a real grade. I don't think so. That would or a GPO three. So like you basically have a, a three. you had the hero kits, but you didn't have the villain kits. Whereas yeah. with like the Gundam, like you had the Gundam, you had Shar Zaku. They didn't do a Gelgoog, but they did do a Zigok. The Zigok. Oh, the Zigok. Fantastic. Yeah. Like, I mean, I think that if they if they perfected the real grade line, it was early in the days. It was like with the Zagok, but then, you know, obviously I know a lot of people love like the Sananju and, um, and some of those later kits, but yeah, I mean, they never came out with like a full family of real grades the way that they do with high grades. You know what? That's a good point. Cause I feel like a lot of those crazier design suits lend themselves well to the real grade look because even a full armor unicorn is kind of an extreme mobile suit, you know, yeah. in a way. And so uh, the Zagok, as well and a high gog would be an excellent um real grade because of again how kind of crazy and strange it is um seeing like the interior components of a gelgoog would be awesome because yeah. like because yeah. you very rarely get to see the internals of a gelgoog even like with the master grade versions it's like yeah that's right um i would love this level of detail for a gelgoog yeah, see, I think that's a good point, especially because one of the main characters piloted a Gelgoog, and that's, you know, I think that makes <laughs> it kind of a, yeah, because, yeah, if they have the Zagok and the Zaku too, but not the Gelgoog, I, I feel like that would be next. Um, you know, it would be interesting to see other things like um, uh, like an Alex, a, a real great Alex, you know, because yeah. I feel like... With that Choban armor, I think there's opportunity there to really make use of the real grade. Like, because yeah. I think like the Choban, layered Choban armor. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. And making it where it's going to be more, I think it's going to be better with articulation because I, I, now I haven't messed with the high grade Alex, but I have the master grade and I have the robot spirits. And while you can put the armor on, it's not one to one with the show because there's some areas that it needs to be able to move. Right. Stuff. So I wonder if a real grade will be able to be more accurate. Um, yeah, I mean, the high grade's okay. It's not fantastic. Um, but yeah, I mean, you have the same issue where like the, the Chobum armor kind of has these weird allowances to, to allow it to still move. And so what I think Bandai really needs to do is kind of finish out the mainline Gundam real grades because we got the new, the high new. And then I think next is like, it, we got Unicorn. Um, mm -hmm. So then, and, narrative didn't though narrative no. okay so narrative f91 victory okay g savior now we're uh <laughs> there we go well and i wonder if that could be where they're going with this like new line of real grades because you know similar to the way the first high grade came out in what 1990 uh and and that oh. was like before they revived the high grade line in the early 2000s and then they revived it again in like 2015 for the revive line so like they've reinvented high grades over the years and i wonder if like maybe that's where they're going with this it's like we took our first shot with the re real grades now we're kind of going to double down on them and say like this mm. is this is the new hg going forward is we're going to do everything in real grade that's interesting because I've thought about that with like the entry grades that have been coming out where they just seem mm. like a pretty yeah. nice high grade, which is weird. So, yeah, I think you're right in the direction they're able to move with that. Um, so that's interesting. Entry grade, real grade, high grade. I mean, because they're all, the, you know, the same scale. Mm -hmm. and sometimes I'm curious what they're marketing or, you know, what the demographics are for each one. And, and how much is the entry grade more of their, like, maybe marketing material? It's more of the promotional 
line they have where these are cheap and easy and could get you into it. And that's why they had the law Gundam, right? Is it's like, yeah, yeah. It, it's the law, what the strike and then the new, I think, and arc 72, like just the yeah. basic popular ones. Um, exactly. To kind of get started. Now, if we're going to go crazy on like conspiracies, when we're looking <laughs> at the proportions of this real grade that's coming out. Yeah. My speculation is that this is going to be what the Gundam in the live action Gundam movie looks like, because to me, these proportions look just like, you know, it's still the RX 78. It's not the new Gundam that's from that promotional image that we saw, what, two years ago now? Yeah, is that... I know. <laughs> but the shoulder size and the head size and everything about it looks like that Gundam, that silhouette that we saw. But that is... it... No, I think you're right because, yeah, I was calling out the shoulders before. I feel like the shoulders are wider or longer than typical for the granddaddy, and that's what it looked like in the promo shot. Yeah. And the uh, the vents, really bulbous and prominent vents on the side. We saw that same sort of thing. I mean, everyone everyone said that it looked like kind of like a cross between the Alex and like the GPO one, right? Was the yeah. was the consensus yeah. about that promo image? Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, I think that this looks like a RX seventy eight in that scale. Yeah, I mean, in in if you're going back to proportions and you talk stability, like it's it's built that way. Um, especially it's built with, more like a real realistic Gundam, yeah. like a real grade, if you will. Oh yeah, <laughs> if only we had a term for that. <laughs> no, that's cool. <laughs> well, yeah, no, that's a uh, good thought, man. That just gets me excited because. Every day I am waiting for them to drop. And I, I bet it's going to happen either right before or right after Requiem for Vengeance. We'll get an update. Yeah. Um, At this know, point, I won't even be, be disappointed if they announce Timothy Chalamet in it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's that's interesting because that would be good for the Gundam movie. And that's the thing to consider. Like, I can do my fan casting all day. But what if they pick people that are going to get people to the movies that are going to get and it's crazy seeing um you know like warner brothers with dune and then godzilla and king kong i think there was another movie like they're just doing really good in theaters with these movies and yeah it's not hard to make a gundam movie that's in the same around the same tone of either dune 2 or they're both very opposite sci-fi films but it's really just showing you know be put some effort and time into a movie um, I think that, um, you know, obviously the superhero fatigue has kind of settled in with movie going audiences, yeah. but it's not like sci fi fatigue. I think that, no. you know, clearly the success of Dune and the Godzilla movies recently show that like people are still into like big, big budget action pictures, but like they just want something different. And I think that Gundam could be that different. <laughs> yeah. And I, I like that you brought up the sci fi aspect like as opposed to the superhero genre because i feel like historically in a way or like a a superhero movie is either going to be a sci-fi movie or a fantasy movie yeah. you know like and i feel like sci-fi movies almost feel like they have to be superhero movies and we don't get many sci-fi movies but then we get something like dune 2 which i still haven't seen but i bet it's amazing i enjoyed the first to a degree and i heard this is better so I, well, there you go. <laughs> I'm gonna go. To, I, I probably won't see it. My, my wife and I fell asleep both times that we tried to watch the oh. first Dune, so that's not a good sign. <laughs> yeah, like to me, that first Dune movie that Denis Villeneuve made is like a great movie to be made, but it doesn't yeah. do exactly what I would want it to do. Like if I was in charge of that, I would have scaled it back a little bit. Like there is interesting stuff, but you can cut that out. And a lot of the interesting stuff to me would do better as a TV series because of the, the, that is a very yeah. good observation. And, and so I have to ask you this then, yeah. did you see rebel moon? Uh, I didn't finish it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you think that rebel moon would have been better served as a theatrical release instead of a streaming platform release? No. And the reason I say this because I was watching some interviews with Zack Snyder and he was talking about how Netflix was like, yeah, first make the movie you want to make. And then we'll cut it because uh, I guess the idea is he would have his uh, the the 
I guess the Netflix version and then the part two and then a combination of both. That's like very long. Okay. Showing me that that would have been better served as a TV series. And I'm, I've never watched game of Thrones. I can mm-hmm. get into it, but I think I would like it now that like, for instance, I'm watching Shogun right now. It's amazing. Yeah. And I watched the warrior recently. Amazing. And what do they have in common? It's drama between families, but like it's colored with badass action. Yeah. And so with Dune, you know, watching Dune, there's so many badass world build- building elements, but you're having to go through the 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 character development because that's like what is the central to the plot is these characters and how they're interacting with each other in terms of the world. And and so yeah, I think Dune is better served, especially the way Denis Villeneuve is doing it as a series instead of um a movie the other thing too is i'm disappointed that they it's more of they just reimagined the uh, david lynch film instead of just doing their own thing like that uh artist before david lynch was gonna make it made these crazy wild designs for dune yeah so we know it exists ideas for dune that don't have to be part of like what uh that first movie was the original true um, well, because well, uh, I never watched the like Children of Dune series um, on Sci Fi Channel, but I heard yeah. that that was like you know obviously closer to the book interpretations. Oh, interesting. So, yeah, I don't know, and, and also I haven't read the book, but but again, something like Dune, Shogun, there's these similarities where it's you know Game of Thrones. Like if yeah. you have a story where it's about these different families or anything, these different groups of people that have hierarchies that then have to interact with each other that is like kind of the grounded basis that make these things addicting it's just politique yeah exactly (laughs) yeah just what is it colored with that can pull you in shogun pulls me in because of samurai i love samurai um did you uh, watch the original shogun no i didn't even know that existed until this came out and i heard it was kind of a based on the book but also a remake of the old show did you watch it yeah, my dad was a huge fan, and uh, he oh, bought wow. me the DVD set, and he was like, look, you love anime so much, watch this, and by the time you're done watching it, you will have, like, working knowledge of how to speak Japanese. Because basically the main character, like, you know, is is this white guy that's in Japan. Yeah. Or I guess having... Portuguese. But, yeah. Uh, but English, yeah. but he knows Portuguese. Like, that, yeah. I don't know if that's different than from the book or the original, but in this new one. Uh, I'm going to have to check it out then. Um because I love that sometimes watching uh, like sometimes I'll show my wife a movie from the early nineties and you know, she's around, she's near my age and yeah. she'll be like, is this old? I'm like, what <laughs> are and, you old? <laughs> but then I'm showing her Columbo and then oh, she's nice. like, Oh yeah, this is good. And I, I feel like that's what stands the test of time. is like how good something was exactly yeah Yeah. well so to that end i would suggest yes watch game of thrones but like i don't know stop after like season three (laughs) oh okay yeah and i know that you're not big on like fantasy but like i think that game of thrones in particular the series doesn't do a whole lot with fantasy for most of the first couple seasons it's interesting yeah which i think kind of part of what makes shogun so appealing is that it's not like fantasy it's like you know it's set in real world it's almost like, like a documentary yeah in a way. yeah oh so and that's kind of how that game of thrones is it's almost like a documentary into their world and then learning these characters and like how they interact yeah i mean the first season you're not getting like any magic any weirdness like it is is Except like, for, like zombies as- right yes and no but like you know that's it's, i remember I'm, seeing I'm that spoiled. <laughs> and, and I was like, eh, okay, well, I might have to check it out then. Yeah, if you ignore the first 15 minutes, then there's nothing. But <laughs> okay. the first 15 minutes is like a basically, I don't know, a horror movie. But <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, man, maybe I'll be checking that out. Uh, yeah, well, my wife and I need something else to watch. But there you but go. I, that just about does it for this episode of the Gundam Explained Show. Thanks for everyone that joined and that was in the chat Ultronomous, please get with me uh later <laughs> about that excellent game <laughs> i'm so excited about that actually um <laughs> but um yeah this was fun i had a lot of fun hey i want to throw it out there if anyone has any interesting topics they want to cover on the show or maybe even pitch me a reason to be on to talk about something let me know gunnam explain at gmail.com or hit me up in discord um Heck but yeah. 
Uh, also, yeah, check the links in the description. We support the channel, but also Steven's stuff. So you can check out the stream yesterday if you haven't. And then I guess we'll uh, see each other again next week. Sounds good. Cheers, everybody. All right. Yeah, see you all later.